I coexist with heaven and earth, and myriad things and I are one. Fifteen thousand years ago, the fate of gray wolves hung in the balance, confronted by the early human hunters. But the wolves were clever. Gradually, they allowed themselves to be tamed and evolved into dogs. Rather than being hunted, they became humans hunting companions. Ten thousand years ago, our ancestors planted the first wheat seed. By doing so, they ushered in a new era of their survival and development. Planting crops allowed humans to give up their wandering existence in search of food and instead settle in one place. Throughout history, the survival and development of humans and animals have been inextricably bound up with each other. The close ties remain to this day. Sanjiang Yuan means source of three rivers. It's where the Yangtze, Yellow, and Langsong rivers originate. Here, the mountain range running north to south offers a refuge for many species and a corridor for animals to migrate. An area covering less than 0.4% of China's territory boasts more than 20% of its higher plants and 25% of its animal species. After breakfast, 45-year-old ranger Pal Gyal and his team set out on a 300-kilometer journey. They carry out these routine patrols three to five times a week. When the Sanjiang Yuan Nature Reserve was established in July 2000, 100,000 people living on the plateau had to give up the herding and hunting life their families had practiced for generations. They vacated 363,000 square kilometers of the plateau so that the wildlife could enjoy a quiet home. On the plateau, the wolves are at the top of the food chain. Their prevalence is an indicator of the state of the local ecosystem. But at one time, wolves were hard to find here. And so, on every patrol, Pao Yal is especially keen to see them. Here on the plateau, at an altitude of over 4,000 meters, wolves and humans are equals. The 
The launch of a pilot project at Sanjiang Yuan in 2016 marked the start of a nationwide program to establish national parks. Over the following five years, national parks in 12 provinces and regions have been created, covering a total area of 220,000 square kilometers. Under an ecological red line strategy, China has demarcated 25% of its territory for ecological protection. This area embraces the habitats of 95% of the country's rare and endangered species. In all, 11,800 nature reserves have been created, covering 1.7 million square kilometers. As the sun sets, the wolves tracks, a sign of the Sanjiang Yuan National Park's renewed vitality, are recorded in Palgyal's patrol log. Like Palgyal, 1.1 million ecological rangers and nature reserves across China are recording how species and the environment are changing and evolving. At the Nubei Liang Nature Reserve, the staff are getting ready to go on patrol in the mountains. Xia Junfeng and his team want to discover the number of plant populations in the reserve. To do so, they are using the quadrat sampling method. A quadrat is a plot of land selected at random for the study of plant populations. The standard survey area for a temperate forest quadrat is 10 meters by 10. This is the Song. This is the Wei Mao, so it's a plant. There's another one, two, 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 two. This is the Xie Zi Cao, which is the Xue Ma Ke. This is the Yang Hu Zi Cao. The Wei Song is a very large size, so it's called the Yu Shi. China operates a biodiversity observation network that allows real-time study and assessment of important regions, key species, and genetic resources. Xia Zhongfeng's team continue their climb. As they get higher, the plant varieties are constantly changing. Branched horsetail only grows in woodland at a height of around 1,700 meters. People in the mountains often use it to identify the altitude. Deeper inside the reserve, the vegetation becomes lusher. The team reach a point where the Lapland Rose Bay gives way to meadow. At sunset, they reach the peak. By now, the mountains are enveloped in a thick mist. Ah, Li Nan, today our climb has reached its climax. This after all, you and me, you and me. 要常来的地方，也以后是我们共同守护的家园。The Chinese Biodiversity Observation Network extends into 2,376 counties. Under it, records of 37,960 animal and plant species have been collected. 
The widespread use of mobile biodiversity survey apps has helped to standardize the collection and management of data. Overall, the system provides an accurate and detailed scientific basis for biodiversity conservation. In the remote mountain forest, infrared cameras record the creatures as they pass. These images give a true impression of the ecology of the mountain forest from a natural perspective. These infrared cameras are like eyes on a secret world. Across China, ecology monitoring stations, scientific research institutes, nature reserves, and wildlife protection organizations have joined hands to set up a vast surveillance network that covers 80% of nature reserves. The 50,000 infrared cameras allow humans a more intimate understanding of the animals' lives. Teenager Gao Xieqing from Beijing is a wildlife conservation volunteer, despite being just 13. He has several years of experience in the field. His project, Where to Find Fantastic Beasts, looks at the distribution of ungulates around Beijing. He and several other volunteers from the Chinese Felid Conservation Alliance are now investigating the presence of North China leopards. The Taihong Mountains cover 10,000 square kilometers to the northwest of Beijing. The area was once the habitat of the North China leopard. But no leopard was spotted here after 2005. In 2012, with its population reduced to fewer than 500, the North China leopard was included on the IUCN's red list of threatened species. Back then, the only places where North China leopards could be found were near Beijing and in Hushun, Shanxi province, some 400 kilometers away. In 2017, a group of wildlife conservation volunteers formed the Chinese Felid Conservation Alliance. They launched the Bring the Leopard Home campaign, and to this end, set about restoring the ecological corridor through the Taihong Mountains. Since 2012, under the Tai Hong Mountains Afforestation Project, the vegetation has been restored in over 7.3 million hectares. In recent years, 11 female leopards have been spotted in the reserve. They have given birth to 37 cubs, which makes Hushan a key breeding ground for the North China leopard. But Hushan is also a major beef producer, and there have been instances of leopards preying on the farmer's cattle. So, raising funds to compensate the villagers and mitigate their hostility and concerns is an important part of the CFCA's work. After a short break, they go on. From Hishun, the volunteers head north to the Tuliang Nature Reserve on the border between Shanxi and Hebei provinces. This is a key point on the Bring the Leopard Home Ecological Corridor. Oh, 天哪! 
，真的真的是来惊喜了，<笑>不是开玩笑的，拍到了，太神奇了，天哪！你看它线条特别的优美，尾巴特别长，总是翘着。The camera clearly reveals a North China leopard. In the footage, just before the leopard appears, the volunteers see a wounded deer pass, seemingly being hunted by the leopard. What this means is that North China leopards have migrated 200 kilometers north of Shanxi along the ecological corridor. It will take time for the leopards to breed and migrate. The young volunteer says he's looking forward to the day when the ecological upgrading of Beijing's mountain forest is complete and the North China leopards reappear. Thousands of years of farming and industrial production by humans have had a powerful impact on nature. One effect has been to drive wild animals away. Now, though, China is accelerating the pace of its ecosystem upgrading in an effort to encourage the wildlife to return. The Pearl River estuary is the largest natural habitat of the Chinese white dolphin. In order not to disturb the estimated 2,381 of this national Class I protected species, the major components of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge were built in a factory before being transported out to sea for installation. On the Qinghai Tibet Plateau, Tibetan antelopes migrate hundreds of kilometers along a fixed route every year. It's the practice among truck drivers to stop their vehicles and wait for the animals to cross the road. The population of Tibetan antelopes has grown from 75,000 in 1995 to more than 300,000 at present. <laughs> This spring, there's an air of tension in the forest of Heilongjiang following a confrontation between some villagers and a three-year-old Siberian tiger. The tiger was originally sent to an animal rescue center. After 25 days of isolation, rehabilitation, observation, and site selection, it was released back into the wild. With the improvement of the ecological environment, increasing numbers of wild animals have been able to return to their natural habitat, bringing them into closer contact with humans. Yunnan is considered one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Its appeal is not lost on the Asian elephants. In April 2021, a herd of them embarked on a spur-of-the-moment migration. <laughs> Traveling across familiar forests, grasslands, and streams, the wild elephants seem to be enjoying their journey. The herd of wandering elephants became an international sensation. 
two of the younger ones lagged behind after getting high on alcohol while passing through a village. They became known online as the drunken elephants who lost their way. The image of the herd lying asleep on the ground was a reminder that whatever species you belong to, you feel safe as long as you have the love and protection of a family. This is an elite tour escorted by drones. A team of people are in charge of food supplies throughout the journey. Apart from the tons of bananas, pineapples, and corn laid out for them, the elephants have also visited the homes of local villagers and tasted various Yunnan specialties. <laughs> The 1,300-kilometer trek took the elephants 110 days. On August the 8th, the 14 wild Asian elephants were guided across the Yuanjiang River, from where they continued their journey southward. Eventually, all 14 elephants, plus one that had returned earlier, were safely back in their ancestral home. Not one of the elephants was hurt during the long journey. Some even put on weight. Through their epic adventure, the world witnessed an optimistic, inclusive, compassionate, and confident China. He who overcomes others is strong. He who overcomes himself is mighty. Once to satisfy their own needs, Humans attempted to rule nature through violence, but nature's vengeance was ruthless. When humans reflect deeply and restrain their desires, they begin to treat their fellow creatures with kindness, and nature responds with warmth and generosity. Those who live near water know the disposition of the fish, while those who live in the mountains recognize the birds' calls. Chinese legend tells of many people with miraculous powers who could communicate with animals. Jin Weigu started hunting birds at the age of 13. Today, the 60-year-old can imitate the song of more than 60 bird species on his bamboo whistle. This unique skill allows him to capture birds without harming them, so that scientists can fit them with tracking devices. I call them Dong Tan is a stopover point on the East Asia-Australia migration route, one of the nine most important bird migration routes in the world. Every year, some three million birds follow its course. At peak times, 20,000 birds fly over the reserve in a single day. A lesser yellowlegs has caught Jean's attention. The birds are no bigger than the palm of his hand, but they have amazing stamina. Every year, from summer to early autumn, they fly from northeast China to far off Australia to winter there. 
Dong Tan on Chong Ming Island is a vital stopover point on their journey. Jean is very gentle with the tiny birds. He will send them to the research institute several kilometers away, where Wu Wei is waiting. Dr. Wu will fit them with small identification rings, carrying best wishes from China. They will continue their migration. On a world map, the national boundaries indicate the limits within which humans are free to move. But for the birds, Earth is one vast space. Three major international migration routes pass over Chinese territory, used by more than 700 species of birds. To protect them, China has signed agreements with Japan, Australia, South Korea, Russia, and several other countries. China, the most populous developing country and one of the most biodiversity rich places on earth, has conscientiously implemented the international conventions on ecological and environmental protection it has joined. It proposed the BRI International Green Development Coalition and is involved in numerous joint environmental protection and biodiversity projects with more than 100 countries. China, by consistently seeking to expand its circle of global friends in the field, is making a major contribution to the promotion of global biodiversity conservation. The technology of coating seeds with metal is called nano-metal coating. Developed by China, the technique ensures that seeds thrive in soil in outer space. The different soils are mixed with soil from the moon in varying proportions to mimic how plants would grow in a lunar environment. Earth is the cradle of humankind, but humankind cannot live in this cradle forever. In 2022, China will be operating a space station. Humankind will have a new base camp in space. Where will people be living in the future? No one knows the answer. But already our biological companions on our next journey are in the making. <laughs>